Welcome to Das Geek. What you see before you is the Amazon Fire TV Generation 2. Having read many reviews on Amazon TV devices, I can assure you I was not expecting much when I received this product. However, it is my duty not to just go by what others say, but to experience these products for myself. And to be clear, I got this as a gift during Christmas. And I had very low expectations going into this one, but I've been delightfully surprised with this product. I find myself completely endeared with it. And if you were like me a couple months ago, somebody said that, I would have rolled my eyes. But stay tuned. I'm going to tell you why. You might end up loving this product as well. What I've found is this is a very capable pre-built media streaming device. It's one of the most capable pre-built streaming devices to date. And I use pre-built because obviously with things like Raspberry Pi and stuff, you can build a really powerful streaming device. The specs on this device certainly stand out and make it a very formidable player in this market. It has 4K support out of the box, micro SD card slot for expandable memory, plus a USB port. Wi-Fi, Ethernet access, 2 gigabytes of RAM, a quad-core processor, and 8 gigabytes of internal, and obviously with the USB and SD card, expandable storage, which makes this device certainly check all the boxes when it comes to pure specs. So the specs are great for geeks like me, but what about the interface? Well, it certainly has some room for improvement, and yes, there is a certain push towards Amazon-related products, but it's not an annoying push. The products are there, but you can also see all the other options easily. You can navigate to them quickly like Netflix, HBO, Hulu, and other services, and it's not hidden or lost behind ads. They're there for you to enjoy from the start. And that was the most surprising thing because this must be a change from where they were initially where everybody was saying all this device does is push Amazon content. I don't get that feeling anymore at all. So they've certainly taken people's uh, feedback here. I can assume and improve that because while there is sections for Prime, as I would expect, that is a key service and a great service by the end of the day. Uh, there are the other apps and options out there are certainly plentiful for you to enjoy and it's on par and better than a lot of media streamer uh, streaming devices when it comes to the app availability you get Plex file manager all cast Pandora and even games that are available to download right from the start additionally Amazon puts last use apps as I mentioned at the top of your navigation so while there is some push towards prime content it's certainly not shoved down your throat and forced upon you from a gaming standpoint you can use the included remote or an amazon game controller or any third-party bluetooth controller will work as well making this very compatible so they don't just force you into using their hardware which i thought was really great they have access to games like tales from the borderlands walking dead quicklash alto and there are just dozens of games that you can look at here that are available for this device. As far as navigation, you can go to the very top here and we can go to apps and it will show you some featured apps here. And then we can go into games directly and you can see some of the games that are available for you to download. And it looks to be very similar to exactly what you could download on a uh, from their, what do they call, underground Amazon store. So any of those Android based apps are available here for you to download game wise uh, it appears I can't see anything that uh, I've not seen on underground not here so there's just a lot for you to play including Grand Theft Auto Final Fantasies the Game of Thrones I mean it's it's all there and speaking of apps the flexibility of having ES File Explorer app and VLC allowed me to take my USB drive directly out of my Plex Raspberry Pi server and instantly play movies from that USB device. It's not super simple to navigate but it's easy enough to figure out. So here is the ES File Explorer and you can see I can go in here and play some of the Battlestar Galactica that I have on the USB drive that's plugged into this device and I can't play that because it'll get instantly flagged for violation blah 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 um, based on copyright rules so 
Uh, just know you can see these files there and with VLC you can play any file format that you have. And in addition to all of this, if you're not already sold on this device, this has Alexa built in. I'm talking the full joke telling, web browsing, music playing, Alexa integration that you would get from a tap device. It's incredibly fun. I was blown away by the power of Alexa, maybe even a little bit frightened when I asked to order trash bags. It looked through my order history, found the favorite trash bags that we order with the nice lavender scent to them and uh, gave me the best price, which of course is an Amazon based product, but uh, that was pretty amazing to me. It can tell you a joke like this. Alexa, tell me a joke. See, I mean, she's not the best joke teller in the world, but pretty awesome to have Alexa here. Alexa, order me a raspberry pie. This will be interesting because we'll think raspberry. Look, it knew, it knew me. It's like geek. You're not talking about a literal raspberry pie you would eat. You're talking about the raspberry pie three model B motherboard. Very cool. So you can see the power of Alexa and it's built into this device. So for the same price that you could get a Roku 4, you're getting Alexa built into a device in the $80 mark, which is very cool. You're getting kind of two devices in one here. And the fact that they gave you the full Alexa integration is quite amazing. Alexa, play music by Bruno Mars. Shuffling songs by Bruno Mars. You don't have to cancel out of this, but you can see it found the song and started playing it right away. And that just makes it quite amazing. So at the end of the day, the Fire TV is not what I expected at all. It's powerful, it's fun, it's plug and play. And as much as I love Roku and still do, though I hear the comparable Roku 4 may have some hardware issues, I'm going to keep the Fire TV connected. It's easy to use if someone comes over or watching the kids. I don't have to leave them a manual to show them how to use this device. It has a very simple remote control with the Alexa button at the top. Very easy navigation. It's simple. It's like any other controller. They didn't try to reinvent the wheel. The power is here. Every app that I could need or want or even using my own content is available. I can play games on this or hand it to my kids to play games and don't have to worry about them breaking an expensive controller. I can connect third-party content or devices to this device as long as they're Bluetooth. I mean, I don't know what's not to like about this. They've done a fantastic job. I'm very impressed with the Fire TV. This will remain a staple in my house for now. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think of Amazon Fire. Is this a completely different experience than when you had one? Maybe when people were complaining about Amazon just pushing their own content. Is this something you've used and enjoyed? Let me know. I love hearing from you. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains.